Good morning. Uh, I think it's a time to, to start. And it's not that bad. It's the third day and only five minutes late. Uh, so we, are, we could say on time. Uh, you probably already know me. I'm Nena Leosk and I come from um, eGovernance Academy. Uh, and I'm uh, a program director. Uh, but, uh, but before we go on, um, uh, I would like uh, uh, to, to thank all my colleagues because it's, it's not only me and, uh, and Ivar and, and perhaps Lia, whom we will also see later today, who have been uh, managing this big event. Uh, there are many of us, but as you can see, also not so many. So a uh, 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 small team can do can do big things. Um, what we are going to talk about today is um, um, electronic participation. Um, uh, over the uh, last uh, two days, we have been hearing about uh, e-government and e-governance, and, uh, and there have been uh, talks what is more important, either, uh, either being visible or not being visible. Uh, what makes things happen? Is it uh, providing good services, or, or is it um, uh, citizen participation. So um, we are, uh, have been trying to find an answer how the things uh, things are. And uh, uh, and you can see a scale here. Uh, we have always been promoting the the balance, the governance. So so we we believe that that both of the sides are, are equally important and uh, and have to be developed hand by hand by hand. You may ha get a slight understanding or, or feeling that, that e-democracy is here ki kind, of a, kind of above. Uh, what is the si situation really and um, what is the role of, um, of, uh, of e-democracy uh, in, in governance we will also discuss uh, uh, during this session. Um, how we will set up the, uh, uh, the two hours, um, I will comment and introduce the, the speakers. We have uh, in, uh, in total of five of them. Uh, I believe we could uh, keep the questions to the end, so we could have uh, one, one discussion. So um, uh, I'm not going to uh, keep our speakers long. Uh, I'm very glad to uh, introduce this first speaker, who will um, probably give you uh, an answer to, to this question or to this slide. Uh, you will know. Uh, whether a democracy is more important than, than, than the e-government. And Ms. Lia uh, Hani is also a program director uh, at our academy, but uh, previously she has been very active in politics. She is our Minister of Reforms and um, has always been uh, uh, believing in uh, citizens' power and, uh, and role. And, uh, and she also has a nickname, so be, please, Mother of Democracy in Estonia, Ms. Liahan is all yours. Grand, grandmother, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, looking at on these boards, I actually am thinking we need to redesign this picture. Because uh, what they, uh, what is, how to change? But <laughs> I, I lost the opportunity to, to change the slide. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I keep everything to myself. Okay. So, as I said, maybe we don't need two boards anymore. Because the main message I got from this conference. Next. Yes, the main message I got from here is uh, that uh, e-engagement is the, an essential component of uh, modern e-governance. It was uh, expressed in different uh, words uh, during this conference. For example, uh, our minister, Johan Park, said we have one package, e-government. And this one package is, of course, the administration, the services, uh, but also the participation and the democracy. We heard a lot about uh, open government. And if you think what open government means, actually, this is 
government which has the same targets as electronic democracy. It's uh, transparency and accountability of the government, uh, citizens' involvement in political process, a little bit about the quality of opinion for formation and deliberation, which, uh, from my opinion, is a very important issue because what kind of democracy we, we need is a deliberative democracy. The uh, world is uh, uh, becoming so complicated that we need uh, to be able to have a rational debate about the processes which influence our lives. But uh, to be more exact about our uh, subject today, let's uh, make some understanding what actually e-participation means, because e-democracy is uh, actually as wide area as democr democracy itself. So we, we can have a different, a different classification of different areas of electronic democracy. I have one here on my slide. E-participation uh, means uh, government and citizens' interaction, mostly. Although participation has also very wide meaning, participation in, in businesses, uh, in everyday communication, but uh, let's uh, have our talk here about uh, citizens and government interaction. Grassroots activism is very important. We, we just heard important uh, keynotes uh, from uh, Pippa Norris, and we understand that grassroots activism may create a new situation and uh, affect governments even uh, to to get governments uh, step back. So uh, these are not separate layers of democracy, but uh, very closely interlinked with each other. But uh, as related to our topic, of course, we need to think how uh, citizen activism should affect government policy, not during revolutionary events, but during our everyday, normal political life. Of course, political campaigns online is a very important issue. We can see here in Estonia that uh, political parties uh, not having enough resources and having a lot of voters in Internet try to bring their campaigns in the Internet. And we studied how it happened uh, during the last elections we had in Estonia. And indeed, we, we can notice considerable effect of uh, uh, internet campaigning. And e-voting is the last one. There will be discussion about e-voting uh, during next session. Uh, it's, uh, you know that Estonia is pioneering, and some people think uh, we, are, we are too enthusiastic about uh, electronic or internet voting, that it is still we need to take concern about security, but uh, somebody needs to pioneer, and uh, I'm happy that my country has uh, taken this, this role. But personally, I think e-voting is still not like a, a powerful tool of electronic demo democracy. It is more like a, a modern service provided to citizens to, to ease their, their voting exercise. So I like this very, very simple picture about uh, uh, government citizens' interaction. There are, of course, much more complicated pictures about the stages of the interaction, about the ladder of, uh, of government citizens' interaction or spectrum. There are different names how to describe uh, this process. But I think this uh, three-stage uh, the uh, picture is uh, uh, quite good to understand that e-participation has actually also different sta stages, different opportunities, and even different tools uh, to, to be effective. The first layer is information. Information is always basic. If citizens don't know what government is doing, there is no opportunity to participate 
face to face or, or electronically. So information is basis. The next stage is that the government uh, starts to be interested what, uh, what citizens think about their activities, about their ideas to draft a new policy document or, or legislation. But still, <coughs> consultation phase means that uh, government has initiative. Government asks and citizens uh, respond. It's also very important uh, for democratic governance that even having consultation in place, we still can expect uh, that government should open their, their minds uh, uh, what, uh, what citizens propose uh, to, to have in political agenda. And this mo most advanced stage we can call active participation. I think it's better to call it a real partnership. Partnership in policy making, partnership in, in democracy. And now, remem reminding these three different uh, stages of, uh, of uh, uh, government citizens interaction, we can ask uh, uh, about what kind of tools we have, uh, uh, electronic tools, uh, to advance uh, these three stages. One uh, uh, very uh, typical slide uh, to explain that uh, we need to, to have a look at all political cycle. It is not that you need to involve people only if some important policy issues are under discussion. All po uh, policy cycle means that government, that citizens should be able to have their input uh, during uh, agenda setting phase, uh, policy formulation phase, which is of course very important. Uh, Decision making is still a uh, prerogative of our representative bodies, but in some countries, of course, also popular referendums are, are in use. Not so much in, in my country. Policy implementation is a very important phase where people can have their feedback about their experiences using uh, new electronic services. It's very natural that using the service you immediately can also uh, say, it, uh, is it good uh, to make some proposals to, to improve the service? And policy analysis and evaluation, who is the best to evaluate uh, uh, the influence of uh, uh, policy? Then people who are using the, the opportunities provided the policy. Therefore, let's think about uh, uh, how to involve people during all, all the phases of policy making cycle. What I want to say to you is that policy matters. It has been a uh, lot of, uh, of uh, talk about uh, success of Estonia. And uh, of course, I also, it was too rosy picture actually I got from here. But uh, I started to think what may be the, the, the reasons that still we are quite a successful country implementing new technology. And I remember that this first uh, document, uh, first policy document about principles of Estonian information policy. I was at that time member of the parliament and uh, my colleague Ivar Pallo was one of the initiators uh, of drafting this uh, piece of legislation. And I think what, what is important that we realized that uh, technology creates a, quite a new situation, new environment. And that time we, we honestly say, uh, told, it's written down here that we don't know yet what kind of new reality it will be. But definitely what we knew already is that it will change our lives. And I think this understanding about the importance of technology reshaping our, our everyday reality was a re reason why we were able to pass in Parliament the, the law, amendment of the law, to introduce a digital identity, to introduce ID card. Because that time when we did it, there was no electronic services available. Opponents asked us, why? Why you spend taxpayers' money to produce ID cards nobody can use? But this vision of 
the influence of technology to, to our reality. Uh, and this wide understanding about polit among politicians, I think, was, was really important. And also what, what we uh, thought that time is that the technology will shape interaction between the state and citizens. And as example of, of this uh, thinking was our first, uh, first uh, portal. We called it Today I Decide or Direct Democracy Portal. And this boy uh, we call Tom, it's a Tana Otsustamina, it's an abbreviation Tom, a boy's name, not an Estonian name, but uh, we try to remember it. This, uh, uh, this boy was with us uh, from 2001, 2008, he didn't die, although it was the uh, beginning of my career of, uh, as an electronic democrat to observe what's going on uh, in this portal, which was intended to invite people to put forward their ideas, what should be improved in our legislation, in our policy making. So, uh, it was like a citizen's initiative portal. And we started to look what's going on, and uh, you will ha uh, uh, have an opportunity today to, to know more about uh, how it worked. Uh, so I'm not going to spend money on that, uh, or time on that. <laughs> but uh, actually, yes, we observed uh, the history or um, uh, how this portal is working, and uh, every day, every year, we go organize the celebrations, celebration of Tom's birthday, which was like uh, to, to make a uh, review what has happened and to, to have ideas how to improve things. And uh, what happened in uh, uh, 2008 was that this boy was not, uh, of course, dead, but it was integrated to the uh, e-participation portal of Estonian government. And it was uh, very important to understand that maybe we, we are going to talk about the uh, one-stop shop or window for electronic services, but for electronic participation it is also very important to, to have one place where people can come and contribute to, to policy making. And for that time, it was also obvious that different ministries started to work out their own platforms for citizen engagement, like Ministry of Economy and Communication as its own uh, particip participation portal and so, so on. And we, we uh, thought it is um, good to integrate uh, today I decide system to this uh, wider portal for, for online consultations. So, I know the time is short, but uh, I, I have some slides about uh, providing uh, information. In Estonia, indeed, uh, uh, this uh, uh, first act on public information, I think it is the most important and revolutionary act for, for uh, information society development in Estonia. From the uh, viewpoint of democracy, our understanding was that indeed we, we want our public administration to be transparent, that uh, citizens should have uh, uh, opportunity to monitor the performance of public, public, public duties. It was our main idea be, uh, behind the, uh, this act. And we had some uh, principles, how access uh, to the public information should be guaranteed, and also uh, some tools, how it is uh, exercised. So, request for, for information is what uh, people can use when they don't find the information they, they want to have. Websites are public institutions. It was obligation for all public institutions to open websites in local rural communities, uh, were needed to do it, although it was not, uh, not so easy, and the talk was and debate about who should pay for that. And it is an issue, who is responsible for information society development? Is it the central government or 
our local governments also uh, uh, stakeholders. And our, our decision was that it is our joint, uh, joint uh, activity that also local governments should, should have some money to, to support uh, information society development in their communities. We have, of course, document registers, uh, uh, and uh, from 2009, we, we also have access to, to the content of, of documents, not only the macro data. Of course, if there is a limitation of privacy, it's, uh, it's a different story. And free access to the internet in public libraries, it was very necessary and it might be still necessary to, to have uh, all society integrated into information society. And it allowed us, uh, for example, to have official uh, bulletin of, of uh, legislation to have only electronic format because there was opportunity to, to ask for printing in, in public libraries. Of course, there is a long list of obligatory online content. Uh, our public institutions should, uh, uh, should uh, display on their websites. What might be uh, important for, for e-participation is uh, that drafts of policy documents and legal acts should be also displayed before they uh, are going to be approved by, by institutions. But of course now we, we are about uh, outcomes of implementing a public information act. As I said, it's for, from my opinion, it's a, quite a revolutionary act in sense that uh, we have a right access to the information. But uh, this moment and year, ten years after passing this act, Act first, we need to ask from ourselves, is it enough in, in this new uh, situation we have? And the uh, issue is about uh, uh, open data, uh, making uh, not only information available, but also uh, uh, raw data available in uh, machine-readable format. And it is an issue uh, our government is uh, debating now. Okay, online consultations, we will hear uh, about this, uh, uh, this topic uh, uh, later on. So, and the uh, government of Estonia also has some important information system for consulting with citizens, and next speakers will tell about you, so I'm looking, is it something important I want to stress? Ah, and that this is what... Uh, what is our situation now? There is a debate going on about do we need uh, to uh, regulate decision-making process or should it be like a development of public culture so that public uh, officials uh, are ready and capable of doing uh, online and face-to-face and -face, uh, uh, public consultation, public participation. And uh, my, uh, my, my observations uh, are, and I think uh, also we are reaching consensus with uh, uh, State Chancellor at least, that there should be some regulation in place where uh, this regulation should make a uh, decision-making process open in certain stages so that public uh, will know what's going on and public will also have an opportunity to contribute to a decision-making process. It doesn't mean that every piece of uh, small <laughs> legislation will be, uh, is necessary to consult and to have a long process prepared uh, for consultation, but in principle, all decision-making uh, process should be visible uh, for citizens. And of course, it is, this is a new demand for government government agencies to open up all their activities, but also for citizens, because uh, if we want to be partners, real partners of our government, uh, we, we need to have a capacity uh, to be serious, to be rational, not to, to use uh, the typical online speech uh, providing our input. And uh, 
But this is uh, also our activity by e-governance academy uh, try to, to raise awareness on information society and electronic democracy in Estonia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lia. Uh, now we have a, a better understanding of what we mean when we talk about e-democracy and, uh, and we also heard what sets the ground uh, for, the, for the development in this area in, in Estonia. So we move uh, further to concrete examples and uh, we will take a look um, uh, what the government uh, has done uh, in order to use the new technologies to, to communicate with people and then also to get them uh, involved in what they do. Uh, so um, uh, our next speaker, uh, Mr. Johan Remik, is from the State Chancellery and uh, uh, he's uh, uh, responsible for this area. Uh, in, uh, in our government, but uh, I would like to make maybe one comment and then hopefully we can also get an answer. Uh, after hearing Pippa Norris this morning, we may wonder uh, why governments bother now that we know that, uh, that citizens are uh, a lot more satisfied with the governance when they get the information from traditional media, uh, not, not the internet, when they, when they get more skeptical and, and critical. So, uh, Johanny will... Uh, I uh, will also tell you why is it that way that, that we are still into E. Thank you. Thank you, Mila, for this introduction and um, good morning to everybody. Um, I would first like to thank the organizers for inviting me here today um, to be able to share some ideas with you and some maybe concrete examples. Um, can I never have that um, tool, please? Well, um, as Mela said, my perspective certainly is uh, as that of a government official. And as you know, most of the tools built so far are uh, those that the government deems uh, necessary. So <clears throat> in one way, it, it is um, a narrow perspective. But uh, that doesn't necessarily uh, mean that we don't take uh, the interests of the citizens uh, um, into account. Um, the first slide really is about um, um, sort of history of um, those web-based uh, tools on the left-hand side and um, on the right-hand side uh, uh, um, some contextual uh, developments that I believe are important in this context. And um, first you see, as um, Leah mentioned on the left-hand side, uh, we started in 2001 uh, with um, today I decide um, web portal, which uh, essentially is, um, is a mechanism uh, uh, to provide the citizens an opportunity um, to come up with initiatives, uh, suggestions, uh, which would then uh, be taken up by the government and um, uh, formed into a decision or, or a policy or change to a policy. Um, but I will talk about that um, in, a, in a minute. Um, but basically, we see here an evolution. Um, so, um, for example, 2005, a, a very important initiative already mentioned by Leah was, um, was the first um, e-voting, which, uh, which is essentially, again, uh, um, mobilized uh, citizens in... Uh, in uh, um, using the, the web um, and the internet um, uh, to basically communicate uh, with um, the government in very uh, sort of special, under very spe special circumstances. But let's move on from there. Um, 2007, then we basically um, took what was um, um, a good part of uh, POM, uh, which is today, today I decide, as we learned in Estonian, um, and we added um, uh, a few other parts. So um, essentially we um, provided another opportunity um, for citizens to observe what the government does by uh, providing them information about um, draft legal acts, um, any other policy documents that were uh, prepared by government institutions, and also made it possible for them to engage in uh, public consultations. 
And then, um, in addition to that, now we have from this year a new tool uh, which um, which tries to make basically um, these pieces or bits um, to sum up in a, a better system um, in which um, what I already described, uh, this information would be um, more easily um, um, accessible and also uh, perhaps more easily um, uh, made possible um, to engage uh, with government. On the right-hand side, um, you already mentioned uh, the very important, um, in a way, a starting point uh, in this context, the Public Information Act. Um, we also had um, what I consider um, a very important milestone, which was the adoption of the strategy on Estonian third sector development by the Parliament. And uh, a, f a few years after came a, a, a more concrete action plan, um, which was for the government to implement. So that showed the will of the government and also the readiness by the public sector um, to become more engaged. And, um, and I think it also put a pressure on the whole um, entire civil service um, to make an effort because it's not really a very comfortable thing for civil servants in their everyday job to also um, communicate uh, with the public or um, to take up initiative on their side um, um, to make uh, uh, e-participation work. Um, another uh, milestone in 2005 was um, the adoption of the Code of Practice of, of Citizen Engagement. And um, it's, a, it's a set of principles which guide the activities of public institutions um, by basically um, saying that, that public consultation is a necessary part of each civil servant's job. Um, having said that, it, it doesn't regulate how exactly they should do the, that job well. And, um, and perhaps I should jump right um, into um, my job and, and also uh, what is about to come um, effective from next year is exactly to to regulate a bit more um, how that interaction um, should uh, uh, should function. And perhaps the last thing on this slide, you see, um, in 2009, um, a very sort of um, energetic um, group um, of people, um, entirely um, sort of citizen, um, um, but basically um, entirely civic or civil um, initiative, um, was about um, to be launched um, in one day to collect um, as many ideas uh, from as many people living in Estonia um, which would make their life better in their neighborhood or in the whole state. And in just one day, um, some 11,000 people gathered all around the country and they brainstormed what is good for their um, for the society, for themselves, for the neighborhood. And um, it was um, an excellent example of um, sort of citizen to citizen um, um, initiative that Leah referred to earlier. Um, but it also had its um, impact on, on the work of the government because some of these um, initiatives certainly require some decisions um, um, taken by local governments or, or the central government. So. Uh, based on these ideas and their involvement, um, some of them made also to, to the um, sort of government ranks. And they were also facilitated by some expert groups. So were, they were not just ideas, but, uh, but uh, well articulated and, and um, well um, sort of shaped ideas that fit better uh, the sort of thinking in, in the government. So. Um, Perhaps a few words about um, tea, then. Um, it started, um, as I said, um, as, an uh, as an initiative by the government to, to, um, to encourage people to uh, come up with, with ideas 
uh, through one dedic dedicated um, uh, web page. Um, so how exactly did it work? Well, there was um, usually a sort of five-step process to be followed. Um, first, obviously, um, uh, a submission by any citizen um, and describing perhaps uh, so what is behind that idea. I don't know. Um, uh, making parking uh, less, uh, more accessible uh, in their neighborhood, whatever. Um, uh, but certainly it was something which uh, reached rather the central government than, than the local government. And sometimes uh, it's not easy for a citizen to make that uh, distinction. Then um, all the rest of the users of, of that web page um, um, were able to comment on that idea. Basically to discuss it, shape it, um, um, criticize if necessary. And then um, after a certain period, such as two weeks, um, um, or maybe longer, the, um, the, the initiator um, was in a position then to, to sort of edit the idea and uh, put it in the uh, shape that it wanted to be um, voted on. Then um, voting ensued. Um, uh, a simple majority uh, decided whether it was successful. And if it was, then um, then uh, the idea was uh, signed by the initiator, um, submitted to the um, government office, uh, which is equivalent to the state chancellery. Uh, and then um, it was signed by that time by the prime minister and sent to uh, a government ministry for uh, deliberation. Um, in about um, five years' time, when some conclusions were made, um, um, the, the portal had um, about 6,600 users, um, about um, 1,500 ideas were, and other submissions were um, presented. Uh, they were commented on about 6,600 times, so basically each idea received uh, roughly four to five responses, which is not awfully a lot, as you see. And, um, and um, the, the number of hits on the web page was roughly 80,000 uh, a month, which is considering the, the number of population, about 6% of, of um, the population. The problem with that was that um, only about two to five percent of ideas uh, were um, successful in um, um, in triggering triggering a response by the government organizations, which were positive towards that um, submission. And um, a usual problem when we uh, surveyed a little bit uh, uh, was that government officials thought that the, the ideas were not um, um, mature enough. Um, they um, didn't fit their own work plans, um, priorities. And due to that, they said that, well, thank you for the idea. It's an excellent one, and we will deal with it in due course, which may have never come. So um, certainly, that's something we may discuss um, later. Um, it, it is difficult um, to make the government officials um, be positive about those. And maybe there is also a need for a mechanism to somehow uh, support the initiators in shaping the ideas in, in a way which would uh, make them sort of better fit um, the, the government thinking. So as I said, um, as the next uh, sort of evolutionary step was to, to um, build on that previous experience and add some other um, um, sort of dimensions um, to that. So I mentioned uh, public consultations um, as well as, um, um, as presenting um, uh, draft bills um, uh, to the public uh, so that they would be able to, um, to first be better informed what the government was doing, and then also to, um, uh, to comment if uh, necessary. Um, I mentioned the code of um, a public engagement, and I said it's rather um, um, non-regulatory, so to say. 
And one of the things we saw here um, when we um, initiated the, uh, the portal was that, um, again, um, since um, there is nothing about um, uh, how consultation should take place in uh, administrative procedures, then um, uh, I have to admit that the government organizations have not been terribly active in, in initiating those. There are some very good examples when everything has been done, so to say, by the book. But all in all, um, it's, um, it's not a very um, common practice in, uh, in um, engaging the public through this tool. Um, um. So um, this is something we have been uh, dealing with since the launch of it in 2008. And we still are not quite sure what um, a good sort of um, um, response or good solution to that could be. One of the things we have realized is uh, certainly that um, there is a need, as we also mentioned, to somehow um, incorporate some like regulatory um, aspects into the whole policy making cycle, and especially so in the uh, legislative process, um, to make um, um, participation or to provide that opportunity for uh, participation uh, compulsory. And this is something which um, should become effective um, uh, from next year. Um, by the way, I believe that uh, Nella will present you shortly uh, uh, after my presentation um, a presentation of this um, um, next tool uh, we will talk about um, um, by, uh, by a minister uh, of the government. And this now should be sort of um, the, 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 um, the ideal model, so to say, how this all um, comes together. So let me uh, tell you a few words about um, um, the tool which we call Information um, uh, System for Draft Tax. Um, here you see that all the draft acts go through this um, um, web page. And, um, and some of them can be then put up to um, uh, public um, consultation. So there are sort of basically three sections on it. Public consultations, um, and drafts sent um, uh, for um, uh, consultation with other government agencies, and then um, drafts which have been already uh, adopted by the uh, government and uh, uh, potentially submitted to, to for Parliament uh, for deliberation. So I'm not going to um, go into that um, um, at the moment. So here are um, uh, a few sort of um, perhaps um, educational messages that we um, deliver usually to civil servants. If they get um, um, involved in, in um, in, um, in initiating um, um, uh, consultation, public consultations, what are the things to, um, to keep an eye on? And one of the crucial things, I think, it's, it's um, that um, these documents themselves don't tell a citizen um, a lot. But there is a need to provide always um, sort of uh, an explanatory letter, if you want, but not in the sort of sense of legal act. That, that are also uh, accompanied with explanatory letters, but sort of a, a simple explanation of what is expected from citizens and what responses um, uh, the government uh, uh, is actually looking for. And that would help uh, a lot to, um, to make those public consultations uh, work better. Um, so some of the conclusions, um, these tools are uh, certainly useful, but they hardly work as standalone uh, things. Uh, everything which relates to managing those uh, uh, web based tools, it needs um, um, sort of uh, supervision and support uh, by, by dedicated officials. Uh, they also need um, um, sort of, um, uh, should I say, sort of marketing uh, uh, for the citizens actually to know that they, they are available. And this is not just one of process, it, it, it's a constant struggle. Um, and finally, uh, as I said already, um, this um, e-participation tools probably don't work terribly well 
if they are not uh, uh, incorporated into everyday um, job of um, civil servants uh, through um, either legislative process that they are um, they need to take those initiatives seriously or or through other means but um, this is also I think something up for uh, discussion so thank you very much and um, I think um, I give the floor now to the next speaker and we get into discussion. The video. Okay. Yes. The video. Yes. Um, thank you, Johan. You can sit in. Uh, and before we go to the, to the next uh, speaker, uh, as uh, Johan mentioned, this spring um, a new initiative uh, was launched that is a, a revolutionary uh, because it gives and every uh, person a possibility to see how from an idea to the actual law, how this process goes, but not only to observe, but also to comment and, and they say their opinion. And uh, as our academy has, um, has been involved in democracy or the participation development in Estonia for a long time, we have, uh, we have been uh, uh, contracted by, uh, by the relevant ministry uh, in Estonia, we made a short uh, introductory video this uh, September where our um, uh, Minister of um, Regional um, Affairs introduces the system and how it works. It will be in Estonian. Uh, I, it will take three minutes, uh, a, a bit more from our, uh, from our time today, but I guess it's useful to see how it works and, uh, and uh, you will get a better understanding. Uh, this will be an Estonian with English subtitles, and uh, and I hope that our translators can can help the ones that uh, that will understand Russian. So please. Well, hello, my name is Kaasa. My name is Kaasa. My name Kõik haalus on läbi kaalutud ja seadusel on välja töötaja 
liigub edasi viimases etappi, ehk esitamisse. Siis ka see etapp on meile ilusti sellel samal ühel nähekülel nähtu. Miks kõige vajalik on see, et meil tahame teada, palju siis tegelikult endast ettepanekustest, et seda arvesse võeti ja kas see, mis meile tagasi siis ei näite nii ettepanekute osas, kas teesti see vastab teele, see avalikustamine on meile heaks kontrollimehanismiks. The video is available also on YouTube, so if you couldn't remember everything right away, please go and double check. It's, it's, it's going to be very useful. Uh, before uh, we move further to the, to the next uh, uh, presenter, uh, we, I, we have an honor to have a guest from uh, Slovenia. Uh, I would like to um, uh, go back to the uh, already many times mentioned Tom. So uh, in 2008, uh, it was the end of the, of the Tom in a way that uh, we had had it. Um, but, uh, but what we did in Estonia, uh, we integrated into the participation uh, tool uh, uh, OSALA. Uh, but uh, what, we, but we, what we also did, we analyzed uh, it together with State Chancellery and also European University Institute. I do not see any of my uh, co-workers uh, at that time here, but they are definitely present at the conference, so maybe you will meet them uh, uh, later, we analyzed and we developed a better tool uh, that we call TID Plus. So that in Estonian means Tana Otsustan Mina Plus. Uh, it is an open source. We can all use it. Uh, there was a brochure. Perhaps you have it in your, in your, in your bag. If you do not have it, please take. Uh, there is a source code for the, for the tool. Uh, and there are also manuals manuals for the administrators and manuals for the users and also manuals for citizens so that we know um, uh, what to do, when and uh, how to do it, uh, who it, to do it the best. I am not going to explain the functions because they are relatively similar to what you already heard, what Tom was alike. Slightly better, you can also uh, make it even better yourself. Um, and. Uh, we will see one practical example of Slovenia. The uh, Slovenian government uh, started to use it, I think two years ago, if I'm not, not mistaken. So the communication officer from the uh, government of Slovenia is here uh, to tell us uh, what they did, why, and what they learned from it. So maybe by the end of his presentation, we will uh, have an answer also whether solutions and models can be exported and and if they can, how and when. So, Klaus Palir, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me start by saying that I'm really honored and to be the only foreigner in the E-Estonia tutorials. And I'm here to present to you the, the experience of the Slovenian government with implementing the open source solution that our Estonian colleagues developed. Um, I work in the government communication office, and one of our tasks is the direct communication with our citizen. Um, in that task, we engage with our citizen, answering their questions, uh, receiving their, their uh, and responding to their suggestions that they send via email, phone, um, and all sorts of other communication channels. And as regards the, the suggestion part of our direct communication, we always felt that we could do more, that we could offer them one sort of, some sort of a platform that uh, would help them when drafting and sending the suggestion to the, to the central government. So in the beginning of 2009, we gave it a closer look and had some ideas what we could gain if we implemented the platform. Or what we thought is missing. So we, we thought that the suggestion and the responses of the government should be made public, because be, before it was one-on-one -on -one communication, government communicating with a, one particular citizen. So 
we thought that that would bring about public scrutiny over the government responses, which in turn could, could also mean higher quality of government responses. Um, we also hoped that by making these suggestions public, we would lower the number of the reoccurring suggestions. So if somebody sent a suggestion that already existed, we could say, well, we already answered that, and you can find the answer on the web. And also, um, which, is, which we thought was really important, that the people could see the feedback from the government. They could see that the government cares about their suggestions, even enough that some of them got implemented. Um, we also thought that we could make suggestions collective, meaning that uh, the platform should enable citizens to work together to comment on each other's uh, ideas and help make the final suggestion, which is then sent to the government, more widely acceptable among the people. Um, and we also wanted uh, that uh, the citizen, citizens could show support for particular suggestions and also have the power to choose which ones are the most important and which ones get then forwarded to the, to the government for answering. So not every suggestion which they posted should, should go to the government official who, and, and, uh, for its consideration, but just the ones who enjoy wide support. Uh, as you may have, may, may have realized, we did not just have the needs of our citizens in mind, but we also wanted that the, uh, well, but also the government institutions who should, as a result of this platform, have um, less work, less answers to prepare, less initiatives to consider, but the ones they do are really important and should get more of their attention. Um, when we are talking to different subjects in the private sector about, devel about the development of the, of the platform, <coughs> we also took a, took a look around uh, at other different countries to see what they were doing in the field. We took a look at the, um, at the e-petitions in, in the UK, the e-government initiative in the USA, and we stumbled upon the, the Estonian project, uh, TID+. Plus. And we realized that it was based upon years of practical experience and academ academic research. Uh, it met most of our needs. It meant that we don't, didn't have to do any development. We were, and with that, we were saving money and time. And we didn't have to pay for any licenses. So uh, we only had to pay for the upgrades and for the maintenance of the, of the, um, of the platform. Um, and <clears throat> at the beginning, before we started, we had some, let's say, fears. Um, because we thought citizens will not take time to register. Therefore, we upgraded the, the open source uh, of the TID so that uh, the citizens can use uh, Facebook Connect and that in turn makes their registration and also login uh, procedure a bit easier. Uh, we were afraid that citizens will not participate if they cannot remain anonym anonymous. So, in order to re register, you do not need to give us your real name. You don't need to, we don't need any of your personal da data, but you all, th the only thing that you have to have is an active email. But with anonymity comes, well, come inappropriate comments. Um, <coughs> Um, as you may know, the suggestions um, are published after the moderator checks it, but the comments are on, on, on published subjects or published uh, ideas are, are uh, visible in real time. So the moderators go through the uh, comments and then afterwards, if, if, if they think they're inappropriate, they delete them. We also wanted to have an option to ban the user and we had the option, but it was never used in the last two years. Um, we, we are also afraid that the interest of the people will be so small that the suggestions will be ad adopted by, by just a few votes. So let's say one for one vote for and zero zero votes against. So we implemented um, a quorum, a five percent voting quorum of all the users. But at the beginning, five percent of all users, and later on we changed it to. 5% of active users. 
uh, we were afraid that users will eventually lose interest. And that's why we implemented um, an, a weekly newsletter which informs the users about new suggestions and most popular suggestions that are currently in the process of voting or in the debate on, on the platform. And the last fear, which has proven to be the most justified, was that the government ministries and agencies will not respond on time or the quality of their answers will be poor. Um, <coughs> Therefore, we did not want, as is envisioned in the TID, that the respective ministries themselves publish the, the answers, but they are sent to our office, we check them, we, well, we monitor them if they were, if um, if they are good enough, and we have the right to reject them. So if we have an, an, uh, an answer which we feel is not adequate, we we'll send it back to the, to the government uh, office which is responsible for drafting the answer. Um, we went public on a Wednesday afternoon in uh, November 2009. At 5 p.m. we sent a, a press release to the Slovenian press agency and by, I think in the half an hour, all the major uh, web portals picked up the news. We also made the evening news and in the first 24 hours, we received 95 suggestions, which is quite a lot for a country of 2 million. Because um, we are really afraid that we won't get any for the first I don't know, two or three weeks. Um, is that what? Don't, well, let's just say that we were even more afraid when we saw the number because we promised everybody they'll have less work, and that meant you'll have more work. Um, after two years, or less than two years, we have almost 6,000 registered users. Uh, we have 2,000 suggestions, or three per day. We got 12,000 comments, or six per each suggestion. We received, or we had 20,000 votes cast, and 460 suggestions got, got the majority support and were forwarded to the ministries and agencies responsible for, for drafting the answer. We already published 428 government answers and we put them in different categories. As you can see, 40% of them were negative. Almost 50% said that the solution already in place is sufficient and addresses the issue and or that something similar is already planning, planned to be implemented. 10% of the suggestions, they say, well, answers, they say that, well, it is one of the possible solutions, but we'll see which one we implement. And 3% of suggestions got a positive response. Well, you might think that's a small number. Well, it is a small number, but, but um, I have to emphasize that these are the suggestions that uh, require the policy change um, uh, or a change in existing legal regulations which were not planned before. So if the, go the, if the government responded, well, we were already planning to do that, we didn't put it in the positive response. We only put, uh, put suggestions that, well, that its implementation would be the direct consequence of the, of the, of the debate that was took, took part in the platform. Um, as regards this, this positive answers, they're really small issues. The big ones like changing the, 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 the pension system, solving the financial crisis, they, they were not too well accepted. But small things like lowering the duties on vehicles used for transport of disabled got through. Uh, more parking spots, spots for motorbikes in the cities. And my favorite, uh, lower value added tax on washable diapers. Uh, which this one is interesting because I think it was a, a mistake by the legislature when the, 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 the regulation was adopted because washable diapers had a higher va value added tax than disposable diapers. So why tax more something that is more eco-friendly? It took, took the Ministry of Finance, I think, 14 days to implement that one because they were really embarrassed about it. Um, but the big issue is that 
the qual is the quality of government responses. We made, we took a survey uh, among our users from which we concluded, well, or they identified that justified rejection or acceptance of proposals and uh, thorough analysis of the proposal as the most important aspect of the whole process. Uh, but they also identified these two aspects as the most inadequate. So, on our part, we can agree with them because sometimes we get responses from the government officials saying, well, that's the law. That's how it is. And the, the users feel that, well, the government is, is there to change the laws. And we couldn't agree with them more. So, we implemented two small remedies uh, which could help uh, the issue. The first one was that the government instructed the ministries and uh, agencies to designate special coordinators for the ministries who are now responsible that, uh, to check the answer um, before the, it's sent for us to be published. And the second one was we also raised the bar. We always had the, the possibility to reject the answer, but we didn't um, use it often because we always felt well it will make the whole answering process longer. But in the in the survey we conducted, it we the, the users told us that they don't really care about how, how long it takes. Just as the the, the you know, it, just as the well the answer should be a quality answer and the reasons for rejecting their, their initiative should be good and justified reasons. Success. Well, um, we made uh, the platform operational in less than six months from the, the, from the, well, the point when we had the idea we should do something. And it took us six, six months, not because of techni technical issues, but because we had to uh, go through the administrative procedure for, for the projects. We spent 16,000 euros in two years. Um, we we received some unexpected numbers, high statistics, um, when compared to Estonia even, even better. And we got a positive response, which is the most important thing from users, from academia, and from the media. And which is really important that the media today in Slovenia uses the platform to find what is worth uh, reporting about. They find on this platform the issues they, that got, get, get in the, more, in the evening news. Slovenia on the EU participa e participation index. As you can see, we had a really negative. Uh, so, well, we were falling from 2000 to 2008, and would anybody care to guess where we were in 2010? Just, just had one year after after we published the published the platform. Well, we made 20. Um, we asked our, our researchers, well, both of them in Slovenia who deal with e-democracy, and they said that they, can, that they don't really know how that could happen. They don't see any other reason than the, this platform. And we also asked the United Nations, uh, was it us? Well, uh, they said that, um, that the project fundamentally influenced the Slovenia's position on the list, but they didn't want to go into details. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Blas. Uh, he will be here, so if you have questions later, uh, he's all yours. Um, I have mixed feelings now, Blas. On the one hand, I am uh, happy that our experience has uh, uh, went on so well. On the other hand, I have a feeling you might have done a little bit better. But uh, you all know what to do in order to get a better ranking. If you do it for 15 years, like we have done, you will get a ranking of nine. <laughs> so uh, I wish you good luck uh, and lots of work. But uh, now we um, move further to the, to the next um, uh, topic and presenter and, um, and social media and politics. That has been an issue of this conference uh, already for three days. We heard a lot this morning from uh, Pippa Norris. Um, before uh, I have an honor to present our next speaker, I will perhaps give you a, a slight background information. Last year, uh, when our um, parliament uh, had their 
its last uh, months to, uh, to, to work. We analyzed uh, the use of social media among our parliament members and uh, out of 101, uh, 36 uh, use social media. Um, I think it is okay, but just, just okay. Um, and uh, just a brief information, um, what is the most popular channel? Um, uh, it is not Twitter that rules here, it is, it is fa Facebook or, uh, or a blog. Uh, but usually it is um, used uh, in a combined uh, way. You can hardly see anybody only blogging or, or only tweeting or, or only, only in Facebook. Um, but there are only seven uh, uh, who use the uh, blog, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, so we had a competition uh, to choose uh, the best uh, member of the parliament in, uh, in social media. And uh, we had two competitions. Uh, we, ha we had a professional ju jury and then we had a, a public opinion. Um, we chose um, the jury site for today's uh, event and as one of the uh, jury member said he is um, consistent and quotable. So uh, please, the member of the parliament, also this year, uh, or in the new um, parliament, Mr. Marco Michelson, uh, he will tell you um, more why he has chosen to be in, in Twitter, Facebook and, and blog, what it has taken him and, uh, and what it has given him. So please. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and thank you, Lina and uh, others, for inviting me to, to, to talk um, in front of such uh, uh, distingu distinguished uh, audience. Um, I don't have a show there. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I was some sort of uh, force of a politician who is uh, using uh, the tools uh, what were described like blog, Twitter, Facebook, and who is acting in politics. I actually, I, I've, I've been in politics relatively a short time period. Uh, I, I'm, it's my third term in, in Parliament. I, I was elected in 2003 at a time when uh, Estonia didn't have yet uh, e-elections uh, or internet elections. And, uh, but um, I, as, as a former journalist, uh, this uh, gives you some sort of hint why I'm so active uh, sometimes in, uh, in, a, uh, in a blogs or, or Facebook or Twitter. But um, nevertheless, I think that, uh, that the world, as we all know, has been uh, relatively dynamic around these uh, last eight or ten years time and I think so this is what we saw before here up in, uh, in on, on the board shows also how quickly things are happening both here in Estonia or some uh, some other place in, in the world or in Slovenia for instance um, so it, it, it also influences quite a bit uh, us uh, politicians who have to uh, keep uh, some sort of um, uh, base with uh, with this dy dynamics uh, and both in in government uh, as ministers or in parliament as as uh, members of uh, of parliament. Um, for me, this was very educative. <laughs> I tell you honestly, I, I, some some things I saw first time in my life. What was up here? So it's uh, this is more to to our e-governments academy as well to teach uh, not only our citizens but our politicians as well more how to, to keep track uh, on with, uh, with all the changes uh, happening in our life so quickly. As I, as I mentioned, the life has been very dynamic and the, and, the, and the way how in Estonia political decisions are made, but also how people uh, can participate in, uh, in uh, decision making. Uh, uh, has changed dramatically. And I think so the starting point here is uh, the, the way how people can actually keep their vote. And I think so this is a key question. And this very much influences their activity in, uh, in e-participation as well. Uh, obviously, during this conference, uh, you have heard 
about our e-voting system and uh, the possibilities of people to, to vote on different uh, elections, on municipal, uh, European Parliament elections or uh, national elections. And uh, the, the number of participants uh, growing uh, quite steadily and quite, uh, quite fast. And um, um, during um, last elections, what we had uh, just a few months ago in March, uh, I had, just from my personal experience, uh, I got uh, uh, 4,000 votes, I was elected to Parliament, and out of those 4,000, uh, 44% uh, were given uh, via Internet. This was, this was one of the highest, um, and I think so this tells also or explains the connection uh, that uh, I have been um, uh, let's say, relatively active in, um, in uh, social media, uh, blogging, uh, using Facebook and Twitter. And, um, uh, and I think so this uh, is the trend which obviously will uh, expand more during uh, next elections uh, uh, in, in the future. Uh, now, uh, this is obviously up to each politician. Uh, and up to each po politician's uh, profile, how he or she acts in in uh, public uh, uh, sort of uh, sphere. When uh, Lena mentioned she was a member of parliament uh, in last century uh, in the 90s, <laughs> uh, and also at the beginning of this century, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, so, um, as, as you all know, the politicians are the public figures, but uh, I think so they never have been as public uh, as, as they are today. Um, and even if they don't blog, or even if they don't use Facebook or Twitter, they are much more accessible to, to the public uh, via whatever tools we have in uh, today's e-world uh, or cyberspace, uh, like um, online media. I used to be a journalist, I, uh, as I mentioned, and also editor-in-chief of Estonian Biggest News Daily uh, during the last century. Um, and uh, that's remarkable, even to think about that, that in 1994-97 I worked as a, as a Moscow correspondent for Estonian Biggest News Daily, and, and the tools, how I sent my uh, articles to back to Estonia, were mostly faxes. And I, I faxed my uh, uh, my stories back here. Sometimes even uh, fax lines didn't work, and I had to use telephone line, no mobile phones, but tele telephone line. And, th and that was just 14 or even 13 years ago. Uh, and uh, today, uh, when sitting here, I'm a great sport fan, and uh, I, I cannot leave without results if something happens with Estonian uh, sport people. And at the moment in Tokyo. Uh, Kaya Kanepi, our best tennis player, is playing against Karolina Wozniacki, who, who, who she is the number one uh, uh, in, uh, in a tennis. And actually, it was great news, first set is ours. I don't know how it ends <laughs> at, uh, at the end, but, uh, but anyway, it shows how dynamically you can be connected to, to whatever happens around you or, or, or uh, the run. Uh, also, I, I sent to my Facebook uh, the message that I, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the, my experience in e-participation. And so, and actually, I, what I found, yes, I use blogs, Facebooks, and Twitter, but, uh, but at this particular moment, and, and we know that uh, the, the solutions uh, uh, will change and there will be some other uh, new or better or or more uh, interesting ones, but, but anyway, at the moment I find that one of the most interesting channels to, to catch the, uh, the interest, uh, and not only interest, but to engage people or, or, or uh, those who are following you, is Facebook. Um, years ago I, I used blog uh, very uh, extensively. I wrote almost every day something in, in my blog. I'm active in, in the field of foreign policy, security policy. You understand in the world happening a lot, so you have a uh, lot of ideas or comments about that, what's, what's happening in, in the world affairs. But, uh, but I find that uh, just maybe a year or so ago that blogs are not anymore 
as useful uh, to catch uh, the interest of the people as 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 are now, now you know, social network tools like uh, like Facebook and and Twitter as well. And um, I, I think that uh, the uh, discussions and, uh, and in interest around these uh, uh, things, what I put up or link up in Facebook or, or tell where I am and what I'm doing and what I'm thinking um, in, in my political activity, actually I, I, have, I uh, get a lo lot of feedback. Uh, not only to see that people are there, but also that I, I got some ideas interesting sort of uh, issues with what should I uh, bring up as, as politician, as chairman of Foreign Relations Committee in, uh, in Estonian Parliament, and, and I use it. And also, the last but not least, again, um, I know pretty well how it works uh, journalistic kitchen, let's say, in a way, but uh, I have uh, felt uh, being acting there also uh, uh, that I have uh, much more connected to those who is as a as poor power without, uh, who connects us uh, with a wider public in, uh, in Estonia or, or wider in internationally. So um, uh, I am a little bit surprised that in e Estonia we have such a small number of E members of parliament. Uh, I don't think that 36 is uh, something we should be proud of. Uh, but uh, I think it should be max, uh, minimum 50 plus. But uh, I, uh, but again, like I said, the, the politicians are free to choose uh, the ways how they act, and uh, some are maybe a little bit afraid of, of uh, uh, being there because we know if you are in social media, if you are blogging, if you are doing these things, you have to be active, basically, uh, you know, daily maybe sometimes even hourly. And if you keep it like a steady stand uh, board there, uh, nobody uh, will interest about you and maybe you lose uh, more sort of supporters uh, than uh, you, you have. Um, talking about our parliament, uh, I think so. we are uh, in a way very, uh, very well engaged with this system which is uh, shown before uh, on practical level. Um, uh, and um, I think so. Estonian Parliament as well is uh, is is in the process of continuous development in, in a way to uh, to be more open or more more let's say accessible in many ways to those who would like to see uh, daily or or in life <coughs> action how the political uh, decision making uh, in our Parliament is is going on. And then, for instance, just one example. Um, now usually our uh, meetings of committees uh, are closed ones uh, uh, if we do not decide otherwise. But uh, being in pro former uh, parliament uh, as a chair of EU Affairs Committee, I decided to, uh, to have uh, our meeting with our prime minister before prime minister goes to EU uh, current meetings um, with his colleagues. <coughs> And to have an open uh, session with uh, their coverage and uh, everything around it. Um, we didn't, uh, obviously, this is, uh, everybody could check it uh, through internet or so, or journalists or people are uh, waiting to our, uh, uh, to our meetings, but um, uh, what we see, there is not that great interest about that. Uh, and I think so, what is, uh, mm, what is important uh, having these solutions on, or giving uh, opportunities to participate. Also, I think so that uh, we, uh, on the other hand, uh, should work also to strengthen civil society and uh, to strengthen uh, those uh, interest groups uh, on a local level or, or, or uh, national level who uh, themselves are more active to participate uh, and to use these tools what, uh, the excellent ones what we have in, in uh, for instance, uh, for instance, in, in Estonia. So um, uh, I think so. This is just very beginning, anyway. And uh, as as we know, and uh, we have witnessed during uh, whatever time back to, to history that uh, the things can change quite rapidly. Uh, and uh, Estonia, luckily, we are a small country. We can quite quickly change quite quickly 
quickly adopt uh, new solutions, both uh, in technology or in uh, even in thinking. So, um, in in that regard, uh, summing up my very short remarks here, um, I think that uh, uh, we should work. Uh, in our parliament as well to, to engage more politicians to, to be active in, in this field but also otherwise uh, uh, to engage people uh, to understand that they could understand better that this is uh, uh, something which really matters and really can influence uh, the decisions what uh, we make in, uh, in politics. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. I hope you have time to attend for some of the questions that uh, our audience may, may have. So, uh, uh, the constant time pressure has also gotten to this room. So, uh, uh, we go further and, and see uh, what has been done at the local level. Yesterday morning, uh, you heard uh, uh, that there is no difference between towns and, and uh, rural areas in, in Estonia. Um, I was wondering whether I should say that it's not the case or not, so I'm saying it's not really the case. There is a big discrepancy uh, between different uh, areas in, in Estonia, and, uh, and some uh, local municipalities are doing well, uh, some, uh, some not so well. Uh, we have been analyzing the, the situation for, for many years, and, uh, and this uh, is not uh, the survey uh, from this or last year, it's uh, from 2009 that we finished in 2010. Uh, just uh, to draw your attention to some of the figures, uh, when we took a look at all the websites of our, of our local uh, governments uh, uh, to see what kind of information is there and what kind of feedback possibilities are provided and how uh, can local people take part in what the local government is doing. So you can see over there that uh, you can get all the names and contacts of uh, local government council members. You know uh, what is the uh, political uh, preference. Um, uh, almost 80 uh, have minutes of the, of the meetings. So uh, you get information on what your council is doing. Uh, but if you uh, want to have a say, it is not all that rosy. You can ask information, but when it comes to more discussion, um, uh, giving you ideas, having feedback on this, uh, it is relatively poor. So there is a clear sign that local governments need to be pushed and they need some assistance. Um, and uh, we are not the only ones in the academy to recognize this. Uh, the Ministry of Interior in, in Estonia has also taken st some steps uh, in order to, to make this situation uh, uh, better. Uh, there are, or still are, two big initiatives. Uh, we are introducing one here. So we have the project manager from the Ministry of Interior, Henry Bock, uh, and uh, he will introduce you uh, how we got local governments um, uh, online and how uh, local people can uh, take uh, online real-time part in, in what the local government is doing. But I'm not going into details. Henry is uh, here, and please enlighten. Thank you. Is this microphone also? Thanks. Yes, thank you. Maybe we can put it more loudly. Okay. No, it's better. Thank you. Uh, uh, first of all, um, it's not only... Uh, e-participation is not only uh, the possibility uh, that you have a chance to uh, give uh, uh, law proposals to the authorities and uh, then wait what happens next. Uh, e-participatory uh, starts actually uh, from getting information about everything, what's happening. Uh, and uh, very important uh, is to get this information from the citizens in the right time and then it's not too late to get this information. So it means that when the decision is already done, uh, it's too late. Uh, and uh, you have to start uh, uh, from the beginning all the processes. So it's not very well, very good. And that's why um, we start to analyze uh, what the local authorities maybe uh, uh, need. Uh, is the system, uh, uh, 
what gives information to the citizens uh, from every stage what's happening in the local authorities, what, happened, what happens in the concerts, what to do right now. Uh, and uh, so it's, uh, actually this task is huge, was huge. And uh, information system, what we build, uh, it looks like, uh, some, it, it, it does look very, actually very uh, uh, wonderful right now. It's not an iPhone solution, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's like, uh, it works like a Swedish, uh, like a Switzer, Switzerland slide, Switzer slide, Switzerland slide, it does uh, a little bit of everything. Uh, so, so right now there are two computers involved in this presentation. One is here, and the uh, picture uh, which runs in this computer is shown on big screen. And this is a view of the local member council, council of the local uh, member of the local council. And uh, this is a second computer, and this is mine. Uh, it's a secretary view. And right now, uh, uh, exactly at the time when this uh, seminar today started, I started a meeting also. I, uh, uh, I uh, started a real uh, 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 council uh, meeting in real time, and uh, you saw uh, 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 later before uh, on, this, on that screen how uh, uh, a real time uh, public transmission was held on, and it was visible for everyone. Uh, so when you have your mobile devices, whatever, with you, and you use the, this VP uh, transmission, uh, which is in this room right now, you just, uh, you, just, uh, you just type this address, uh, www.moris.ee, and uh, you can access to the public view of the meeting right now, what's happening right now here. So it's opening for everyone. We do a real time uh, seminar right now, not only using uh, official transmission, but also this information system. And uh, now I very briefly, uh, because usually it takes at least an hour to explain what the system more than do, uh, I very briefly uh, go uh, through the, some steps uh, just to show to you uh, what is possible uh, 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 when you uh, collect all ideas uh, 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 from the local authorities uh, and put them together to work as one powerful information system. So, uh, right now, the meeting is going on, and uh, from my secretary view, I already uh, did attendance check, and uh, uh, right now I go for the points of agenda, and I put the uh, uh, first point of agenda to the discussion. And uh, uh, it's very important to say that this view here uh, is used by the Nella herself. So I use her computer. And uh, I uh, used a login uh, uh, using her ID card. It's here. <laughs> uh, I know all, only the codes. <laughs> uh, and this system uh, uses uh, ID cards for the rights uh, for, for, for the users. So it means that uh, uh, not everyone can uh, be a member of the local council and access this system, but uh, only uh, 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 member of the councils who, ha who have ID cards uh, with it, uh, and uh, this ID card rights are registered into the system. It's even more complicated, actually. The rights are not held by the system, but uh, by the central uh, Estonia and the state portal, but it's not important right now. It's for the security issues. And, uh, uh, now, when I go to the first point of agenda, uh, you can read uh, what is all about. What is all about? Uh, I was thinking, uh, who will be next host for the ISCOP uh, 2012? Uh, there, there were some rumors that uh, maybe United States, maybe someone else. So I decided to make it like a Law, law act proposal here, like a local council's law act proposal, and uh, uh, to put it uh, for a voting. So, right now, the member of the council can read uh, this uh, uh, text of the act. It's very short, it's here. <laughs> uh, and uh, I put some pictures just for showing, showing 
what the system is capable of to put pictures inside of the hacks. And uh, of course, it's possible to see all the all the history about uh, the processes uh, of this uh, legal act proposal. Um, and uh, as you see, uh, it's a camera picture also on a participant's view. Why it's so? It waits two seconds until it changes. I, go, I, I just now went to the web screen, web, uh, webcam of this computer. It takes two seconds uh, uh, to uh, reach uh, a picture from the secretary view uh, uh, to the central server and back to, the, to, this, to this room. So that's why it's, uh, it waits two seconds. It's time. But actually, it, it, makes a, it creates a possibility that uh, Nele, as a member of the council, uh, she has no need to be in a room. I can take this computer, her computer, and walk away and continue to be at the meeting without any problem. So it creates interesting issues. Uh, the system allows uh, held uh, 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 meetings of the local councils actually without being in the room of the local council. Quite uh, attractive, isn't it? And uh, uh, right now I put to the vote uh, this one point because uh, uh, who will be the next host for the ISCO? 2012. I have two uh, uh, proposal uh, amendments here. One is USA. Let's let's see. Let's go for USA. And another is Antarctica. I don't know why it's Antarctica. Perhaps for diplomatic reasons, because actually no one lives lives there. <laughs> and let's go for voting. Hmm. And uh, as you see, on an LS on an LS computer, the buttons evolved in a real time. So now she can be against, uh, favor, or, uh, or, what, what, and, or just to say that I'm here, but I do not vote, or I do not like to vote right now. So I think USA, it's, it's for Antarctica, actually. Do you want to be yeah. for the Not a bad idea. <laughs> not a bad idea, but <laughs> we're against. <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah. So she's against. Okay, her vote is done, and my secretary, you, you see, she was against. It's already in the protocol, and uh, I also not very much like the idea of being next year in Antarctica. So uh, let's. Uh, I'm also against, and uh, two rest of people who are just involved into the meeting. Uh, or they, do not, they didn't decide. So it's accepted. No, it's a rejected. And uh, they sent the result. Um, so this is what's going. And right now, this first amendment uh, 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 was now voted, and we know that Antarctica was not the, was not an issue, is not an issue right now. So let's go for United States. Wants me to put Antarctic all the time. Okay. And um, now it's possible to vote for the again for Antarctica. No, we didn't want it. We <laughs> want uh, for the uh, United States. So th this is uh, how the system works. I, I just accidentally I think I put to Antarctica two times here. So, but this is how it works, and uh, uh, it's also. Uh, to show that uh, all this, what are the results of the votes, is all the, all the same time they are visible in the protocol also. The protocol of the uh, in, inside of the information system uh, it creates itself, it writes itself. So you see, let's take a look at the protocol. It's here. 
or what's happened using the different roads is written into the protocol on real time. Every step what the information system is doing uh, is uh, visible in real time for all the users of the system. So uh, the system works like that. that uh, uh, when, when the meeting happens in real time, also all the people uh, uh, from the public view can access it and see what's happening in real time and read from the protocol everything what happens on real time. And uh, all this created together. So let's go briefly for the public view. And I will show how it's visible here. It says active meeting is Igor and Academy. And now this is a public view. So you can uh, also see the agenda, uh, which was created before the meeting. And uh, you can see all the points. You can open this text of the uh, 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 acts, the draft of the acts, draft of the acts, legal acts, and uh, you can read them. And that's not all. You also can read the protocol. You also can see in what, in, uh, what point people are right now. You also uh, can read the text of the act without opening of it. Uh, uh, it's possible to download this act document, and you can see the results. First voting was held, and graphically shown that this was rejected. So that's how it's going. And uh, uh, it's it's not only the uh, uh, only uh, uh, visual uh, transmission from the. Uh, meeting of the local council, uh, which is possible to uh, take a look at. You also uh, can access uh, to the uh, uh, mem you can you can read the mem who are the members of the local uh, uh, council. You can uh, get all information about them. You can send to them right email from here. Uh, this kind of possibilities. I'll well, plug it to the English, so it's easier. And uh, you can take a look what type kind of uh, uh, meetings of the councils uh, are prepared or already are finished. Uh, you can uh, also take a search, take a search from all the legal acts uh, uh, which are already uh, uh, decided or uh, which are on a Draft letter. You can search them. And uh, very important part is that you also uh, can uh, uh, give the, uh, you can also insert your own invitations into here. But it's not like uh, uh, you saw earlier on a toy uh, uh, solution, because uh, it's more simplified way. You just type uh, uh, what you uh, think about some kind of new uh, draft or some about some legal act, and this uh, information is sent to the secretary of the local council, and uh, uh, now they, have, uh, they can decide what to do with that. But there's a, one uh, more issue. It's also, uh, if I want, uh, to put it for the collection of the support signatures. It means that uh, uh, if uh, people have chance to uh, insert their own support signatures behind the documents, behind the text of the draft, it's possible uh, to collect a lot of the signatures behind any uh, proposal, and then a uh, local council uh, must do something with it's, it's just, it's just, it's just uh, such a proposal, because uh, otherwise, uh, uh, if you see the list of the signatures, otherwise you just ignore your own citizens. That's impossible. So this system gives a possibility for us and also that. So this is a brief overview and uh, what, this, what this system can do. But also, uh, I will very shortly explain uh, how much time we have? One minute? Two minutes. Okay. One. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
what, what, what else uh, is behind uh, on that project? Uh, because uh, right now this project is on a piloting uh, st stage and uh, uh, we're testing it in one of the counties in Estonia. It means that uh, 13 local uh, uh, councils are, work, are using it and are working uh, using that uh, system. And uh, uh, they give their own, uh, that, uh, they give their uh, uh, opinions and suggestions about how to develop the system uh, quite regularly. So it's under continuous uh, development, the system right now. And uh, this is only the first stage. Uh, uh, if it's tested uh, uh, completely, then uh, the, next, the second stage uh, will be uh, to make from it uh, software which is also possible to use, uh, uh, also not in Estonia, but uh, more broadly. Uh, it's uh, also uh, made in open source code, so uh, uh, right now it's very uh, closely related to the Estonian IT infrastructure, but it's also possible to create uh, different type of links and put it work uh, more simplified way. So it's a uh, like like we are now in a very serious testing period of something uh, 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 which is uh, works in absolutely uh, different ways. Uh, you can real time uh, uh, monitoring in the future what's happening in the local councils uh, in every possible way. So. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. And for those who might wonder, what was he talking about? Uh, don't worry. It, it took me a, a little bit more than 15 minutes to uh, to understand how it all works and and what it provides. But it is uh, uh, definitely a high level and uh, and uh, a new uh, good initiative. So Henry will be here, uh, so you can grab grab him for some personal demos and and perhaps even get into this if you have an ID card. Uh, we have some 10-15 uh, minutes. Uh, I would like uh, to ask uh, our panelists for final questions. Uh, I hope that you have um, gathered some good ones for yourself, so Marco and Giovanni, Lia and Blas and Henry. Uh, I, just mm -hmm. I think I will continue with this meeting. Yeah. Ah, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I would take. Uh, I have some. Uh, uh, I have done my, my thinking here, but uh, I would like to uh, give the floor to you at first. So, uh, does anybody of you have any questions to uh, to any of our presenters? Yerzi, yeah. I'm Yerzi Serihovsky, Open Society Institute. I wonder whether. When you talk about e-democracy, there are two ways of thinking. One about direct democracy, when people decide all kinds of questions over time. Or second, of strengthening representative democracy. Have you had these discussions within Estonia? Have you, it looks to me that you've decided to, on the second option, how was your thinking about this? Do you have a preference or? OK, yeah. 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 We are. <laughs> not going to change our political system so quickly. We have a representative democracy, and this moment our aim is to strengthen representative democracy by introducing also strong participatory component. But uh, we very well understand that having electronic or internet voting in Estonia, we actually have uh, better preconditions to in involve more direct democracy in our political life. And uh, I think we, we need to, to consider some new opportunities. For example, uh, having uh, petitions not only to government, but to have, uh, to have petitions uh, to Estonian parliament, Rigikogu. I made this proposal two years ago. It seems the time was not right to consider this proposal, but uh, I hope Marco, mm. who is also <laughs> now <laughs> our partner, will, will bring uh, this issue up, uh, because I feel Estonian citizens uh, are, are ready to contribute also having uh, their voice to be heard in, in Parliament. But this petition system actually works in Estonia, and we, we, we 
we, what we need only is uh, one signature to get your proposal to the government as was demonstrated here. But simply we don't call it as a petition and therefore La Latvian uh, petition system was displayed yesterday or day after, before yesterday as a success story. Actually, we have also uh, actually a petition system in Estonia. Thank you. Who wants to talk? Or would you like to comment? No, Marco? I think it's on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's a very good question, actually. I, I thought about that then, that uh, where is my job, then, if everybody decided somewhere else. But, but anyway, it's uh, uh, the representative democracy works Estonia. I, I, my idea is pretty well. Obviously, we, we always can um, uh, argue and criticize it but uh, and argue that there is uh, more to do. But I think so that... Um, it, my small experience, like I said, I'm in Parliament since 2003. I think so that uh, all sort of uh, channels, what can uh, give input into political decision-making process within parties, uh, in discussions with uh, different uh, interest groups, uh, civil society, uh, uh, or in international relations, they are reflected in uh, in uh, in our decision-making process. And I think so those tools, what we're talking here about, they, uh, they give additionally uh, better linkage uh, between uh, politicians and, uh, and those who um, uh, yeah, no, we, we, uh, we were voters, let's say. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> we have one more from there. Yeah, hi, Tom uh, the Ministry of Justice Finland. Uh, I would like to hear both from uh, the Slovenian side as well as the Estonians uh, some uh, practical advice on how did you manage to roll out the services, I, I mean, especially on the, on the authority side. So, so, like, what kind of training, what kind of uh, activities did you have there to really, really kind of uh, get the processes uh, transformed, for example, to take, take the initiatives into account? <laughs> Okay, thank you for that question. Um, I think it's uh, very true that uh, without proper um, preparation of civil servants, nothing will really work as supposed to. So we started with um, a lot of training. Um, we put together a training program, which is, uh, I would say, quite um, a thorough course on um, participation tools, methodologies, and also requirements for for. Um, civil servants. Um, we also have um, each year um, had um, a sort of um, presentation of the best um, case studies um, in uh, uh, not just e-participation but, but any kind of participation. And I think uh, these work as, uh, as um, uh, lessons learned, but also they um, they appreciate the, a lot of good practices that are around, but uh, are not perhaps noticed otherwise. So um, I think they definitely also have their place. And, um, and I think in the future, there is also a need to, as, as we discussed earlier, um, to um, regulate some of those aspects of um, e-participation um, in administrative procedures. So um, in certain uh, phases, um, it would be made uh, compulsory rather than uh, voluntary as it stands right now. Thank you. Um, as regards Slovenia, we actually haven't done much on, in this field. Um, we, as you may remem remember, we now have coordinators at the ministries. We, um, when the ministry named the coordinator, we sent them a memo what is expected of them. Uh, we are thinking now that maybe we should invite all of them and present them uh, what impact they, we expect from them and what impact they can make on, on, the, on the development of, of, of the tool. And, but otherwise, we didn't do much because we have not, we didn't change uh, the procedures. We didn't change the, the because we, in the past we already have something called the Public, Public Information Act, 
which says that that um, that they have to answer to questions and in initiatives in, in 20 days. And we will just put or, or we, we took that as the foundation of our system and didn't, didn't do much in the field. Thank you. There was one more here and uh, perhaps we can take one other end. Okay. Sir Akbalan from the University of Helsinki. Uh, could you please tell us about the challenges ordinary citizens have in uh, using all these participatory tools to actually be included in decision making? Thanks. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, I have it. <coughs> Challenges of ordinary citizens. Of course, citizens are busy with our everyday life. Uh, the big challenge is uh, time uh, to, to be informed what important uh, decision-making processes uh, are going on in different ministries. And that's why this new system where we bring together uh, decision-making processes in different ministries gives an opportunity uh, to, to just to ask for information. If I am in interested in what's going on in the Ministry of Environment, I can ask this information. So it assists uh, people to be informed. And to be informed is the first step of, uh, of engagement. Then I can decide, do I would like to or want to contribute or, or not? But of course, it's also citizens' education. Because to be constructive, uh, you, you need to understand the policy-making process and uh, also to understand that uh, the policy is always a compromise. That as a citizen, you cannot demand from, from uh, politicians and from civil servants that my opinion will be considered and uh, will, will be in this document. So it's a... Uh, Con constant education process to understand how democratic society works. And I am happy that the Estonian civil society has understood um, our role and that the government uh, action plan to support uh, civil society activities also involves a special chapter on participation, including electronic participation. Thank you. We take a comment and a question from sure. the question. Siri mm Sila -hmm. uh, from uh, <coughs> Chancery of the Estonian Parliament. Mm. Social media is uh, not only a very useful tool for single MP, but also for public institutions like parliaments. Also some uh, standing committees are even represented there. Mm. And could you please, Mr. Mikkelsen, uh, uh, describe very briefly as chair of standing committee your experiences in this, this context. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, good question. Um, uh, when, I, uh, when I was um, uh, chair of Foreign Affairs Committee in 2003, back then, uh, then I dis and first were elected to, to Parliament, I, I was surprised that uh, none of our uh, standing committees had their uh, own website. And I initiated uh, the first one uh, in Foreign Relations Committee. When I became uh, chairman of EU Affairs Committee, I discovered uh, four years later that uh, none uh, web pages existing on, on EU Affairs Committee. Uh, and uh, now, uh, when I am again chair of Foreign Affairs Committee, I discovered that the web page is still working. But now we have other tools like Facebook, and I initiated Facebook. Uh, uh, sort of uh, account for our standing committee. Not all standing committees are doing this yet, but I think so. We at least, uh, uh, like, like I said earlier, that we are in the process of um, of um, finding the better ways to connect with the people. Like I said, Estonian Parliament work as such. Um, our sessions are all visible through internet, uh, you can uh, read, I, I think, half hour after the, uh, the session is ended, already stenogram uh, uh, on our web page, and see uh, how the, the laws are, uh, when, in what procedural stage they are in the parliament. So everything is uh, quite well uh, accessible in, in, in uh, uh, net, but uh, actually, 
uh, what we in Estonia is sometimes lacking in is uh, the understanding that uh, the, the quite important bit of the work uh, has been done in, in standing committees of the parliament. And like I said earlier, uh, our committee's work is uh, uh, by the law uh, not public, but uh, behind the sort of uh, doors and if we don't decide otherwise. Uh, and here is very important, how do we describe this, what we do and what decision we make also in the social media. So I will push myself more and more that my colleagues in Parliament will uh, do the same in different other committees as well. And I hope also that support from uh, Chancellery of, uh, of the Parliament that engage our committees as well. So, thanks. Thank you, Marco. And we take the last one. Mera Blavadze from Georgia. I have a question regarding uh, users of those portals, both in Slovenia and um, Estonia. Who they are? Do you know? And to what extent they represent the whole society? And what was the dynamics? I mean, if it's stabilized, is it still growing? Thank you. Um, as I said before, we did a survey. And we also asked them some demographic questions, like uh, what they do and what how old are they? We didn't ask them if they are women, female or male, because we didn't find that relevant. But uh, let me just say that 12% uh, of people are in between the ages of 18 and 24. 20% uh, is younger, well, together it's 32% uh, is younger than uh, 35 years old. Uh, the, the strongest group is between 35 and 44, which is like a third of all users and uh, also a third of users is older than 45, which is interesting because there are some, some facts about you know, digital elites, and I don't think that digital elites are the ones older than 45. Um, then, as regards to education, 40% um, of people using the tool have university education. And 40% have, let's say, um, um, Middle education, so grammar school or, or, uh, or vocational school. And as regards, as regards for their status, we asked them, um, well, 26% uh, of people work in the private sector, we have 20% working in the, in the public sector, and then well, we have 8% uh, which are unemployed. It's really the, 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 the demographics of the, of the civilian uh, population. So, um, well, the number is, it keeps, well, it keeps going. At the, at the beginning, we had um, a, a lot of people interesting, but it depends if, like, we had, we have some spikes. Because, um, you know, we had a suggestion about animal police. Not canines in the police force, but just a special force who would monitor that animals don't get, don't get mistreated. And which is really big, and we, we they got a lot of support on Facebook, and just I think that 15% uh, or 20% of all the users just to support that that uh, that suggestions, and we also have one similar, um, which which like got one thousand votes just in that suggestion. So it depends. It depends on the on the on the media coverage. It depends on the on the on the issues currently debated by the government. And it shows in the participation and also the rise of the of the of the number of users. Thank you. Um, I'm afraid I don't have the uh, exact figures with me, but I can tell you from our early experience and anecdotal evidence of um, civil servants actually being active in um, in the voting process, and uh, precisely from the ministries that uh, the, the issues uh, were targeted to. So basically, they, um, in that way, being anonymous, were able to uh, vote down the, um, the questions posed. And that way, they reduced their workload, or whatever motivation they may have had. So this question of anonymity certainly um, raised uh, through that process. And, um, and I think that's something to, to consider um, it, there are both advantages and disadvantages around that, as we know. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. Uh, we are close to having lunch. I thank you and I thank all the panelists. Uh,
I hope you can uh, continue the discussion uh, later and also here in this room when we will discuss sea voting that was also mentioned several times during this uh, event so thank you but before we entirely close I have an, uh, uh, some announcements we have felt an enormous pressure to tell you that uh, this uh, seminar took place because of uh, structural fund support and uh, the other announcement is that there is a data session we're starting at 2 o'clock about electronic land management in, uh, in next room. There was a mistake in the browser. So you know that you can also choose between your voting and the, and the land management. Thank you. Thank you.